I wish we could have somehow videoed the last 30 minutes here in the studio. We have had so much chaos this morning <laughs> with, yeah, yeah we, we couldn't get the equipment to work and then the cabling wasn't work and the mics weren't working and it was just opposition, opposition, opposition. We finally reverted the entire system. We just took the mics and plugged them directly into a mini recorder to get, get going today. And then we forgot to hit record. <laughs> oh, I mean, we were at the very end of our conversation when we realized that. We had recorded an entire podcast, yeah. which is this podcast. But I, God's in it because I, we were simply trying to make two points. And I think I have greater clarity now in round two. Hey, friends, welcome back to the Wild at Heart podcast here in the week of July 18th. And a couple of announcements as we get started. First off, we are taking a break for the next couple of weeks. So next week, the last week in July and the first two weeks of August, next three weeks, we are out of the studio and getting vacation time, Sabbath time. Hope you are too, everybody. So we will not be churning out podcasts during that, that three-week period. We'll be back on August 15th, right, Alan? That's the date? Yeah, we'll be back on August 15th. And our hope as John and I and the team take some podcast time off just for restoration is that as listeners, you take that time and instead of having a podcast to listen to, fill it with things that will restore and replenish your heart. Yeah, exactly. That's, we're hopefully setting a bit of an example here that you, you can actually take a break, even on things that seem as, you know, immovable or important or, you know, mission critical as, as maintaining your podcast. Like you, you can take a break, folks. It's okay. Nothing's going to fall apart. Yes. Second announcement I wanted to make was just a thank you to everybody. Big, big thanks. We are a crowdfunded, listener-supported ministry, and we don't make that known very often. I think I think a lot of people don't know we're a nonprofit, and we are yes. supported by our friends. We're supported by our allies all around the world, and we're just so grateful. I want to say thank you for helping us as you give gifts on the app, on your phone, on our website, any, any way you'd like to do that. And the letter that we send out, we're just super grateful for your support. We've had some lovely lovely notes come in and encouragement and guests. And I just want to say thanks. It's from, yeah, around the world we have support as well as a garage door repairman who's a friend we've met who will drive up once a month and just say, Alan, hey, I got something for the ministry. And, and however the gifts come in, they go to a ministry that really is caring for the heart. So we're grateful. Thank you so much. Yes. Yeah. Thanks, everybody. Okay. So you all have been tracking with us. We have been describing the condition of the human heart and soul in this hour. We are in the cascade effects of global trauma. People's reserves are very low, if, if not just non-existent. And we're doing okay. Like if all that's asked of me today is it's just my normal, I'm actually, I'm, in, I'm doing pretty good. I'm showing up, mm -hmm. you know, I'm getting out of bed, I'm shaving, I'm going to work. It's the extra that really exposes how we're doing. It's when something extra is required of us. So yes. for me, it was the sprinklers that there was a rabbit that chewed a hole in our drip system. And I come out and there's this, you know, rocket of water going into the street and none to the plants. And I'm like, oh, you're kidding me. And so I get out, I'm hoping I can fix it with one of those little goof plugs. Yes. You know, when you make a mistake, uh, as you're installing a, a drip system, there's those little goof plugs you can just plug a hole with. Push that in, and it kind of fixed it, but it's still spraying. And the problem is we're leaving for a week, and I, I don't want my plants to die, Stacy's plants to die. Right. So it was just a one more thing. It, it was now something outside my normal operating capacity. It's yes. asking me for a little more. Yeah. I don't got a little. No, I don't either. I This morning while your sprinkler head was shooting up and out the street, I had a similar situation with an appliance in our home, which was the dryer. 
and I'm downstairs doing work and Kelly puts some clothes in the dryer. And John, it sounds like a banshee <laughs> is just high pierced screaming from upstairs. And there's some belt that has gotten loose, I'm sure. But I'm like, oh, now I've got to fix that. It's, it is just the one more thing. Yeah. Yeah. You were fine before that. Right. Moving into the day with joy. Right. Everything's going to be a great day. It's the extra. Yes. Right. It's that. It's the phone call in the evening. Hey, can we talk? I, I've got something I've been meaning to bring up with you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Even you saying that makes me <laughs> lean back. It's yeah. that. It's that stuff. So, again, just helping everybody identify the condition of the heart and soul in this hour. Doing okay, so long as more is not asked of us. But the reserve tank, yeah, there's very little to draw on there. And the, all that we've been talking about, the weariness, the fatigue, the mental fragmentation, the irritation. Yeah. It's the game called Jenga that where you stack the little pieces of wood. Yeah. And then all of a sudden you add that one more piece of wood, not a big piece, yes. just one more and the whole thing topples. Yes. yes. Or it's, yes. or you withdraw them. That's the game. Remember? Withdraw, you withdraw, you yes. You pull them out and you see how fragile you can make that tower till, you know, one player pulls the, the, right. little, the little piece that caused the whole thing to come down. There you go. That's, that's where we are. And the reason, well, you all know, the reason we've been talking about this through the spring and, and the summer and you know, talking about the book Resilient, talking about 30 Days to Resilient on the Pause app is that we are concerned. We're concerned about the well-being of our friends. We're concerned about the heart. We're concerned about the faith of our friends. Because when you are vulnerable like this, it doesn't take much to throw you and sometimes to really throw you hard. I was on a fishing trip a couple of weeks ago with my son and I, I had a lot of hopes set on this trip. It was a graduation present, just finished grad school and a lot of joy. He loves to fly fish. I love to fly fish, going to Idaho. And yeah, we got, we had this whole week set up to be a little sneak back into Eden trip, right? Beauty and joy and love and that kind of thing. And there were wonderful parts of it. But the first little piece of Jenga that gets pulled out is the weather. The weather was not great. Like first day, it's windy, rainy, cold. We got every layer on that we brought with us. Yeah. Still cold. And I was hoping for great weather. It's summer for heaven's right. sakes. Come right. on. And then the little other pieces start getting pulled out. And, and I was just looking at the fragile nature of my own heart because here's what was going on. My son was catching a scandalous amount of fish. I was so happy for him. We're laughing. We're cracking up. We had hired a guide. We're in his drift boat. The guide's cracking up. Like we, we just couldn't believe how on fire he was, but I wasn't. Hmm. And that's okay. That's yeah. okay. Father's joy in his son, all that. This is his present. But what I was watching my heart was, as this goes on to day two, to day three, he's on fire, he's on fire, he's on, I'm not. I could just feel that from my emptiness saying, oh, come on, God. Yeah. Oh, come on, God. Like, not one more thing. Not, like, come on. And it's that that I'm really concerned about right now. Like the weariness is something God can minister to. The empty reserves is something that can be replenished. Like we, we are very intentional yes. to be helping people towards recovery. But that thing in the heart that goes, oh, come on, God. Right. And when that happens, usually I find myself wanting to go for relief because whatever I hoped would happen didn't happen. Yep. And so where am I going to find that little bit of pleasure, a little bit of joy somewhere else? Yeah, honestly, I'm on, I'm on the boat. The, the day's not even over, but I'm already thinking about dinner hmm. and a couple of beers and the dessert <laughs> I want to order at the restaurant. Like exactly that. I'm already, yeah. my heart is already searching for relief. If this isn't working out, right, right. Come on, God. Well, then I'm going to go make a plan for some relief. Yes. Right. 
Okay. So this is the vulnerable place of the human heart, because when you have something that the enemy's doing in the world right now, we were talking about the apathy creep, the lethargy creep, the encroaching on the epicenter of, I'm just too tired to pray. I'm too tired to go to church. I'm too tired to go to our small group. I'm too tired to do the things that would actually nourish me mm -hmm. in my life with God. We, we, Talked about that a few weeks ago on the podcast. But when you have an enemy right now in the world that is trying to get people, very intentionally suck people, like the Scarlack pit in Star Wars, suck <laughs> yeah. you into, ah, oh, come on, God, into those feelings that, that start first with, really? A and then go into forlorn, and, and then into feelings of disillusionment and you know, whatever. And, and then it's the pull away from God. Right. Like, I'm not sure I want to be a part of this anymore kind of thing. Or we just lower over time our expectations. Well, yeah, maybe I just don't catch many fish anymore. Maybe this is as good as it's going to get. Yeah. And that sense of resignation I, I just think it, it's toxic because where do we go from there other than running toward even more relief? Exactly. And then the relief doesn't last. There, There is a massive difference, friends, between relief and restoration. Yes. Right? Bag of donuts is relief. Binging Netflix is relief. You know, too much wine tonight's relief. I was looking for relief in a couple of beers and, the, you know, the coconut cream pie. <laughs> uh, but, but relief doesn't yeah. last. Right. And it doesn't restore. It doesn't replenish reserves. It, it's helpful. There's a place for coconut pie, you know. But, but we're after, we are in such need of restoration. We're in such need of replenishment. And then you've got this enemy that is just right here that wants people to feel bereft, forsaken, God's not with us. Now, let me add one more dynamic to this. And I began to notice this years and years ago when I had a, a private practice as a counselor, that whatever the presenting issue was with my clients, male, female, young, old, there was always an ace that they would be holding out on God. And it's like, I'll believe God, I believe God is good when, you know, when he heals my mom of cancer, I'll believe that God is good when I finally meet someone, you know, and, and the heartache of being single is real. The heartache of, of cancer is real, but there was this holding out. It, it was a wait and see posture towards God. And it broke my heart because that is so precarious like that. You are really vulnerable right? when you're in that place of kind of playing poker yes. with God and you're trying to hold out an ace of, well, prove it. Like, show me you're good by, you know, whatever, whatever it is. The, yeah, yeah, the promotion I've been working towards or my finances finally turn around or our son comes home or that sort of thing. And I was thinking of, I went back and reread some things in, in Dan Allender's book, Bold Love. Because I remembered this quote from years ago in his book. He says, if God's goodness is looked for primarily in terms of events, then the verdict on his heart toward us will always hang on the arrival of a new set of facts. The evil one uses the pain and confusion of a fallen world to shadow doubt over God's goodness. And I, I want to say, never more than now. Never more than now. Because when you are depleted, I mean, you don't, I don't got enough bandwidth to go fix the sprinklers for heaven's sakes, right? Like right. the dryer is taking right. you out this morning. Right. Well, the, the heartache there and the enemy wanting to really get into the epicenter of our faith, really trying to get people unplugged from God, unplugged from the source of nourishment and life. I just wanted to name this today, Alan wanted to put it out there, expose it to the light of day to yeah. say, hey, folks, whoa, heads up. Like, this has always been true of human nature, this kind of holding out on God. I'll believe when. 
But you got to be really careful with that in an hour like this one, which is why I want to read from Romans 5 for a moment. Paul says this. He says, hope does not disappoint because God's love has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. You see, at just the right time, when we were still powerless, Christ died for the ungodly. Very rarely will anyone die for a righteous person, though for a good person, someone might possibly dare to die. But God, proves his love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Hmm. Like You have to start there. You right. have to start with the bedrock of you have been ransomed. You have been rescued. You are are deeply loved. You are chosen, seen, sought after, pursued. Christ has already come for you, who's died for you, resurrected, ascended for you. We park our belief there, not in the next turn of events, not in the next turn of facts. And I'm watching the days go by on the river and nothing changes really. I mean, my son's still on fire. and I mean, he's he's catching like, it was scandalous. He was catching a staggering amount of fish and I wasn't. And that feeling of, oh, dang, which is understandable. Sure, you know, it's disappointment, but not letting in the rest of this stuff the forsaken, the you don't see me, the, oh, come on, God, that. Right. Like not letting that in. I want to expose this to the light of day right now because I think it's one more way in which the enemy is just trying to unplug people from the source of life. I do too. And the whole idea of holding the ace that you're talking about, that's a new phrase for me. We don't plan these podcasts ahead of time, script them. We come in and have a conversation. And and so as you're saying this, John, uh, it really reminds me in my own life, the ace I'm holding is we have three children who are older teenagers and young 20s. And overall, they're doing good. But there's always something with one of three, as you would imagine, where there's a trial, there's a question, there's a struggle, there's a, a situation. There's a heartache. A heartache as a mom and a dad uh, that Kelly and I will face because we just will look at each other and go, man, could all three just be doing great all at the same time? Yes. Because then we would go to bed at night happy yes. and fine and the world would seem right and God would seem, I'm embarrassed to say, better. Yes. Because everything with that ace, our three children, yes. is great. But that's a dangerous thing for me to do because it puts a condition or an area of doubt, kind of a crack in the armor that the enemy can go for. Yeah, a really big one because your hearts are so tied to it. But you're dealing with autonomous human beings. You're dealing with young adults who make decisions and sometimes really poor ones, all all human beings, not your kids, but that's a vulnerable, vulnerable place. And the thing is, this has always been true, folks. The things we're describing right now, this is, this is life. This is human nature. This is our struggle with, with God, you know, I'll believe when, but in this hour of, of depletion and trauma recovery and, and desolation prowling the earth in this particular moment, The dynamic that Alan and I are describing is all the more precarious. It's like there's only one more block to pull out of that Jenga pile. And it's all going down. It's going down. And you can't do that. You can't do that. So, again, I wish we had videoed what happened this morning because I think it would have been really instructive. We tried one fix. It didn't work. We tried another. It didn't work. We tried a third. It didn't work. And the frustrations growing in the room, you know, we're now – like texting colleagues and canceling other meetings. And I had to cancel an interview and stuff because we're stuck and we're trying to get this, this podcast to you and trying to get things done so we can get off on, on our Sabbath. And the last little Jenga right. piece was 
we had recorded the entire podcast and looked down and, and seen that our unnamed colleague had not pressed the record button. <laughs> and she was crestfallen. And I'm like, whoa, 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 wait. Right. No, time out. Back up. We are going to, no, 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 no. We're not going to let this take us out. We, we went all the way back to square one. Jesus, you are good. You are here. Yes, this is frustrating, but we are not letting this turn of events right. take us for a ride. We're going to back all the way up to right. the goodness of God. And we literally like re-centered ourselves in Christ, re-consecrated the day. Like we started over. Right. We yep. rededicated the podcast, prayed for the equipment again. It's like, well, I hit reset. Right. And it wasn't even anybody's fault. It was, you know, we found ourselves realizing this is about anything of the kingdom is opposed and the enemy knows how to take each of us out. And so whether we turn to the technology or, or our own, you know, forgetfulness on something like, man, John, I just find those are always the things that creep into my thoughts that cause me to get further from God. Well, it's the sprinklers. It's the dryer. It's, it's the extra that we did not anticipate today. Right. It was asking more of us that the, that none of us really had. And so then there's the frustration and there's the forsaken feelings. And it was just right there. No. Like, you are loved. You are seen. God is good. We're going to start from that place. Yes. Thank you, Romans 5. We're going to start with, God has settled that for all time at the cross, none of those questions are, are up for grabs anymore. His heart towards you is unbelievably good, loving, kind, intervening. We're going to start there. Yes. And then we're going to figure out this current moment with his help. But like on the river, I'm not going to go to, oh, come on, God. Oh, come on. Because that, that little chink and the enemy of this hour is just right there. Right. Wanting to just pour gasoline on that. And pretty soon you go from discouragement to despair. Right. <laughs> well, and the enemy knows our one ace pretty clearly by yes, now. Yes, he does. And if all it takes is yes. that card to be taken yes. or set aside yes. for everything to crumble, yes. then that's not a very firm foundation. Yeah. You want to win the war for your heart? You want to really disarm the enemy? Give God your ace. Mm. Honestly, gang, like it's the only safe thing any of us can do. I've got, I've got to do it and to turn it over and say, Lord, I am not playing poker with you. I'm just not. I love you. You love me. I, I surrender the ace. I'm not going to wait for this turn of events to believe you see me, that you care, that you're good. No, I give you that ace. I want to be grounded in you because in this hour, relief itself won't work. We need restoration. Yes. And restoration comes from union with God. Let nothing into that. Let nothing into that, friends. So that was just something we had to get before you this week, everybody. That's huge. And I can see why the enemy was so opposed to us getting this podcast out. Yeah, no now. kidding. Okay, everybody. Love you all. And we'll be back on August 15th. 